What's up, peeps? My guest today is on a mission to give employers more financial freedom by freeing up health plan expenses and cash flow. Daniel Corliss is the Chief Executive Manager at Stimulus for Business Initiative and the founding partner of Business Stimulus Partners. We're going to dig in deep today and find out more about that mission and uncover some of the ways he's helping transform this insurance industry. Daniel, thanks so much for being on, man. Frankie, baby. Love to be here, man. Thanks for having me. All right. So a uh, little backdrop for the audience. Uh, I've been, we're part of the, a, a group, the healthcare hackers. Uh, I see you, 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 you chime in there a lot. One of the things that, one of the comments that I really loved, you meant you, you said something along the lines of that, you know, you keep it real. You know, you're going to say what's on your mind and, and, and you encourage, um, I think overall you, you, you encourage some friendly banter, but I think if something's on your mind or you don't disagree with something, uh, you don't agree with something, you're going to you know, voice your opinion. Uh, so I think that that was one of the things I saw not too long ago. I was like, yeah, I, I like this guy. And then we did, we met in San Diego um, at a, a NAHU conference. So, um, so glad to have you on. Before we get into any of the you know, Q&A, which I'm excited mm-hmm. for, why don't you just give the audience a little bit of a, a backdrop, a, a day in the life of Daniel, who you are and what makes you tick? Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, a day in the life. Geez. Um, well, I primarily work in self-funding. You know, that's my, my game. That's the only um, piece of the industry and business I touch. Um, we've recently created a program called the Stimulus for Business Initiative, and that kind of takes up most of my day um, as of late. Um, and really what we've done is create sort of an entree into self-funding for groups that are currently fully insured um, by allowing some upfront stimulus by freeing up um, some fee money on the front end. Um, that along with my core business, which has been as a self-funding consultant for other agents and employer groups, um, that takes up about, you know, 10 or 20% of my time. So man, my day really starts at like six or seven in the morning when the stock market opens. Um, I'm, you know, watching Yahoo finance, I'm watching the trades and then all the way through the end of the evening, man, I'm, I'm just, you know, dealing with uh, new business RFP and that's about it, man. It's uh, all work, no play pretty much. Yeah. So, so anyone tuning in, whether, whether it's uh, someone who's actually in the insurance industry and it doesn't matter if on the carrier side, the selling side, whatever it is, or there's an employer that's tuning in. I think that there's a, a lot going on in our industry with the rising costs of healthcare uh, how things are, how we pay for things. You know, a lot of times people just, you know, they, they think they have insurance, they go to the doctor and, and um, it's magic and it gets paid for. And, and sometimes they get caught with a, with a big bill. And, and there's just so much chaos, I think, around the insurance industry. So I'd love to, you know, kick this off by, you can tell us maybe what, what role you play in, in helping make sure that employers and the folks that you work with um, through the brokerage side and the consulting side, how they have a good experience and, and, and what, what role you play there? Yeah, man, that's a big ball of wax. I mean, we could talk all day about that, but um, you know, basically you're right. You know, so somebody thinks they have health insurance, you know, they have that little card in their wallet and you know, they go and, and seek out care uh, at a facility or provider's office. And, um, they don't really know necessarily who's paying for that, who's putting that bill. I mean, they might have a copay and some coinsurance, um, which I call, um, you know, anti-health care. Basically, it prohibits some people from actually even going and getting preventative care or care that they need. It's a whole other story. But um, really, the, the employer is typically footing most of that bill for your health insurance. Um, and that goes back and affects you know, your, your paycheck and the, the growth of that company, which also inhibits your own growth as an employee. So really getting the consumer, the, the member of that health plan to take a look at it from more of like a macroeconomic standpoint and realize that they're really a part of this bigger system and they need to take some more responsibility and being a, a better consumer of healthcare that's really kind of the big picture story um, and the picture that I'm trying to paint for employers, other brokers, and their plan members. Um, because it really has to start at the community level and at the member level um, to really start controlling these costs. I mean, 
we can work all day long as advisors and brokers to mitigate those costs and try to steer members to certain places of service that are going to benefit the, the employer in the best way possible and, and do some other things. But really, it's going to come down to that decision and the paradigm that the member has and, and the choices that they're making on a daily or weekly basis for their health care. So when you think about, because, you know, and I'm glad that you, you actually address, I know it's a kind of big loaded question there. Um, but one of the things that people think about is you know, when they, when they, and even for my own company and we're not, you know, th this massive company, but even for our own team, you know, we get handed down a renewal, you know, we, we look at other plan options. We make sure that we're doing the best by our employees and the employees typically will say like, oh, the, the rates are higher, we gotta pay more, you know, and they're blame, every, the, the, it, the blame goes up, you know, all the way up to, you know, let's blame Donald Trump, you know, it's, it's his fault. So I like how you, you know, brought it back down to the, the, the member level and, and bringing it down there. So, so what are, yeah, I, and of course, it's, these are things that you can talk about all day, I get it, but what are things that members could be doing um, to have a better healthcare experience for, for, for themselves? Well, I mean, to your point, it really is a systemic issue and it's not just up to the members. Um, I'm gonna go back to what you said earlier um, uh, in that, um, that run up there is that it really does go up the chain. And I'm just gonna call it out in, in traditional Daniel fashion. There, there are status quo brokers out there that are providing options that aren't the best options for the employer or for the membership of, of that plan. Um, and I don't think that's necessarily intentional, although in a lot of those fully insured markets, there are some uh, obscene and perverted kickbacks that, that some of these brokers are taking, that they're getting paid on the back end of some of these health plans, um, pretty exorbitant uh, amounts of money. Um, with that being said, there are a lot of brokers out there that just don't understand uh, or have been educated on some of these other options that exist. And that's on us as educators and um, communicators of, of new trends in the industry to really get that message out. And you're right, like I do make a lot of noise in those forums. I do call people out. I call things the way I see them. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to do that. And we have to. I mean, this isn't our mom and dad's insurance industry anymore. You know, we are next in line. It's up to us to really be the change agents of what's happening. And, and that's going to trickle back down to the members. And that same education and communication that we give to other brokers and that we provide for our industry and all of the innovation and changes that we're making that also has to be communicated down to the members so that they can make those better choices on a daily basis. Um, and ways that we can do that and equip them is through technology. And you're an expert in technology in the benefit space. And that's something that we're all doing on a constant basis these days, right? We're, we're on our phones, we're on our computers constantly. Um, so that's really the best communication medium to educate members and get them to make these better choices. And, and what, so, and, and I know the, the recent, um, the startup uh, that you came up with, what is that, what is that, what did that come out of? Um, because I think it was May or something this year um, that you, that came up, but um, the stimulus for business initiative, what, what brought that on and what is the goal there uh, what do you see happening and how you're going to help change the industry th through this initiative? Because I saw a lot of, I went on the site, I saw a lot of logos, recognizable logos. So for you put together something that perceptually seems impressive, even to me going on there and checking, I'm like, wow, it looks like, it well, couldn't have been easy to round up all these people and to get them to back and believe, but there's enough people that say, we believe it and we want to change it and, and it's not, we need to all get together. So if you can, you know, what brought this on and, and what's the, what's the hopeful outcome there? Yeah, you're right. It's a really great team um, or consortium, if you will, of, of plan partners that all came together um, and bought into this idea for the greater good. And um, to go back to the beginning and kind of tell you the genesis, it was really a perfect storm that was brought on by COVID and also, um, I had started my own agency back in February, uh, DC Advisory LLC. 
and COVID hit literally a month later. And I was right in the midst of, you know, getting my agency up and going. I had some events um, at local, you know, hotels and things like that that I was putting on. And um, I was really excited for the future and, and the future of my agency. And when COVID hit, it kind of put the brakes on everything, right? I mean, employers and other brokers, all their attention was on, oh my gosh, you know, we have to deal with this crisis. And so I had to come up with a plan. How do I reposition myself to help these other brokers, help employers during this time of crisis? I had to basically shift my focus and provide a solution for a need that was currently happening. And I was watching the news and I saw all of this talk of stimulus money and government stimulus and um, you know PPP loans. And um, that was kind of a buzzword. And I thought, you know what? Why can't we create our own stimulus program within the benefits industry? I mean, I'm not a huge fan of relying on government for, for things. Um, and that's just the way I've always kind of thought. I always, you know, I'm, I'm a free market guy. I think that, you know, industry and, and the American working people um, are really the, the best solution for any downturn in, in economics. But um, so I started thinking about it and I said, well, what I'm going to do is offer to waive my fees um, for some sort of upfront time period for other brokers and employers, you know, to kind of help free up, you know, that 20 to $30 PEPM um, and get things moving again. I started reaching out to other partners and asked them, hey, would you be willing to waive your fees for the first 90 days or first six months or whatever it would take to help employers not only save money on this waiver of fees, but get into a better plan environment with self-funding where they can actually free up more cash flow, save more money in the long term, and save money up front on the, the stimulus uh, fee waiver, which now at this point with all of the different partners we have at the table, it's not a health plan. It's, it's a health plan environment. Uh, we don't have any packaged solutions. It's basically just an environment where we say, hey, come on in here, choose the plan components that you want, and we're going to waive fees for the first 90 days. And so we're allowing them to do that. And it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Um, at this point, we're at uh, 60 to $120 PEPM on that first 90 days that's being completely waived. Um, that's a lot of money. That's 180 to $360 per employee over that 90 day period. Um, for a hundred life group, you know, that's 18 to $36,000 just in the first 90 days. So we think that's a pretty good stimulus to allow an employer to not have to lay some people off, not have to cut back on production, maybe not have to close down, you know, some doors, um, things like that. So we, we think it's our own stimulus program for the benefits industry. We're seeing a lot of good momentum and, uh, we're excited. We're we're glad to be helping other people in the industry as well as employers. I'll tell you, it, it's, it sounds brilliant. Um, I think, um, I think you, 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 in true entrepreneurial fashion, you, you, you were quick thinking and made a change, you know, February, you were thinking one thing and, you know, not shortly after you were like, all right, things have changed. How do I adapt? And, 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 um, and really the, 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 the whole ecosystem that you've put together is impressive. And on also the fact that you've, there's enough people that got on board um, that th it shows that there's some, some, some changes that need to be made. And there's some people who, who are willing to put the money on the line to back it. And, and you're right. That type of money, that type of savings for groups in 90 days is, is a lot of money that can be put towards payroll and other expenses. So um, yeah, I, 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 I think it's, it sounds brilliant. What, um, so what's it look like? And I'll tell you this, we work, you know, I've been doing this nine years now on the tech side and I'll be honest with you too. Sometimes I work with brokers and I'm like, how does this person have a job? You know, like <laughs> sometimes it's, it's that it's like, really, I'm like, how, how are you advising people on their employee benefits? So I know from your perspective, there's gotta be ones that think they know it all don't, you know, we got this figured out or the ones that are very comfortable giving 30% renewals to their clients because their commission check goes up. And then there's ones that 
Um, there, there's, you know, that, that just are stuck in a way, status quo, don't want to learn. But there's a, I, I got to imagine there's a huge portion of brokers and consultants out there that say, we do want to change. We want to do what's best for our clients. You know, we're impacting and, and changing lives. And I'm, I'm imagining those are the folks that you're want, you want to work with and, and that, you, that are, are part of, of what you're doing. How, how attractive has this been if we look at the nation um, and, and the folks that you're working with, I have to imagine that this has been picking up pretty quickly uh, because it seems like why wouldn't you want to do this or want to be involved in this? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, and I've gotten frustrated in the past. I'm just going to be honest. You know, some of these brokers out there that that do think they know it all and they have the solution. They've been doing this for 30 years. Hey, you know what? They have a ton of knowledge. They have a vast wealth of knowledge about a market that I know nothing about, and that's the fully insured market. Well, I know enough about it to know that I don't wanna be in that market. Um, but they're so rigid to change. And I found, I found myself getting really frustrated pretty often with some of these brokers and um, trying to work with them, get, getting them to see the light and come to the Jedi side from, from the dark side, right? And this is perfect because this is a, an olive branch where we're saying, hey, not only are we providing a better environment for you and your, your clients, because I'm sure they're looking for solutions right now. Um, just about every broker agency out there probably has 30% of their, their client base in that 50 to 150 or 200 employee range that are really struggling. They're looking for any solution they can to free up cash flow and, and uh, reduce costs. And that broker, that smaller agency might not have the skills or the staff or the education around self-funding to really confidently take a group to self-funding, which is a good thing. You don't want to take a group self-funded if you don't know how to do it. Um, you don't have someone to help you. So we're, we've also provided um, that education and that help for other brokers. So not only are we saying, hey, come on into this, this program with your client, but we'll also show you how to successfully manage a self-funded health plan over the period of one, two, three years. Um, so it really is sort of raising the tide to lift all boats in the benefits industry, not just for employers, but all, also for other brokers and other agencies. Um, and yeah, I mean, a shift needed to happen. And one of my favorite books is called Extreme Leadership, and it's uh, by Jocko Willink and Leif Babin, who are both ex-Navy SEALs. And they basically translate um, their Navy SEAL training and uh, their, their operational background as um, operations specialists to, to business. And they talk about how if you're not adapting, you're not surviving, both, you know, in the sandbox and also in, in business. And so it's very important for us as an industry to start adapting, um, start looking at solutions to help be the genesis of change going forward, not just during this pandemic, but going forward forever. Let me ask you this. So what you've said so far should have everyone's attention who's tuning in. Um, and you definitely got mine. Someone's tuning in right now, whether they're, they're an employer. And so we'll, we'll get kind of maybe to talk about that, but they're an employer that's tuning in right now, or they're, they're a broker that fits in that mold that you just described that, Hey, yeah, you're right. You know, I, 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 I'm not comfortable in this area, but I can use the help and the instruction and know that we can put it in this program, this longer term, one, two, three year, see some changes with some clients, get some education, make some impacts. Do you, so two part, because I want to make sure that the, um, we don't have anyone hit you up who might not be a right fit, but um, if, if an employer is listening in and they're like, you know what, I'm tired of this. Our broker is the spreadsheeter that comes in every year and says, here's what your options are. Here's what your renewals are. Take it or leave it. Um, and they're tired of dealing with it. Do you have a network of brokers that, that can help those employers? And then for the brokers that are tuning in, um, and then I guess maybe for both, but is there, what, what segments do you work with? Like who's the ideal person to fit in what you're working with? Um, where you can see those changes and, and what are the steps to getting started? So, um, you know, a, a lot in there, but, but what, what are we doing if, 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 uh, if this is attractive and, and people are tuning in and they want to make some, some changes? Yeah, great question. Um, well, an employer can have it both ways. 
they can say, hey, we have a great relationship with our broker. Uh, we want to keep this broker, but we want to come into this program. We can we can facilitate that. Um, if an employer says, hey, we're you know we're ready to make a change here. We we think we've kind of outgrown this broker. We've outgrown their solutions. We're ready to look at self funding. Absolutely, we have uh, a great team of advisors and brokers all across the country. Um, we have a handful of general agencies actually that we've set up in different markets around the the country from from Oregon to Southern California, all the way over to the East Coast, uh, Pennsylvania and Georgia. So really, uh, we have that taken care of. Um, the, the second part of your question, um, which I think I forget what that second part was. So you asked what an employer, yeah, so uh, if, uh, so, what so the employer you, option if you got a so so the employer that wants to keep their broker or or, or maybe they, they they want someone you got the network part covered the other part was you got the broker that's tuning in that says hey man i, I get it i know that i'm i, I don't I, I need your help what 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 should they be doing they just hit you up and say here's what i got and submit an rfp how does that process work yeah um sorry i thought i was on a roll there and i just completely went blank <laughs> um need more coffee i think so yeah um so a broker uh, can definitely come in. Basically what we'll do is we'll say, hey, here's the consortium, here's the syndicate, if you will, of all these plan partners and all the solutions we can provide. The, the actual plan design and benefit design is still up to the broker. We will give them suggestions uh, on, you know, whether it be like, hey, we think you should level fund this group, or you, we think you should use a traditional network for this group or RBP or, you know, this type of cost containment, um, but really it's not up to us. I mean, we're just there to kind of facilitate and help guide other brokers. So we're not, for one, we're not taking away their business. They get to keep their relationship with their client. Um, and they also get help when they need it and how they need it. So they can ask us to be as hands-on or as hands-off as they want us to be. You know, we can be you know, working with them on a day-to-day -day basis through, um, you know, open enrollment, through implementation, all the way through the end of the first plan year. Or we can sort of just step back and say, okay, it looks like you got this. You have some background in self-funding. You have an agency with, um, you know, subject matter experts that can help you with this. And you have, you know, account managers and, and a team of staff that can really help assist you. But we'll be here in the background if you ever need us. Um, and by the way, we have some of the best stop loss markets um, in the nation and the underwriting that we're getting for this program and, and the, the partnerships that we've built is, is absolutely fantastic. And I've, I've never seen underwriting so competitive. So um, it's, it's a safe space for other brokers to come and, uh, you know, look for solutions for, you know, their hurting clients. And there's nothing wrong with, with someone raising their hand. You don't have to be the expert in everything. You know, that's the thing. I think a lot of folks feel like they, they can't raise their hand. They can't go somewhere for help. They can't you know, go and, and seek out the expert when expert help is needed. So, uh, so it's good that you got that safe space for those brokers to say, listen, we got your back. You know, we're not trying to compete with you. We want to make things right. And, and you, we can hold your hand all the way through it, or we can hold your hand as needed. So love the, that whole piece there, I think, is, is very attractive to those brokers who, who do want to see some changes, because I got to believe that there's a lot of them out there. That's a great point, because as much as I would like to say that I'm the expert at everything self-funded, I'm really not. You know, when it comes to like uh, PBM contracts and digging into the weeds of that stuff, I mean, I don't really know what I'm looking at, but I have a team of people and experts that know exactly how to look at PBM contracts and how to look at, you know, all things pharmacy and RX, because that's such a complicated world and there's no way I can be, you know, an expert at, at everything. Um, you know, stop loss contracts are kind of the same way. Um, you know, getting into the weeds of the, you know, the fine print of some of those contracts, there are, there are certain things that you really need to look for. Um, we have, you know, FIA Group is one of our partners. They know exactly what to look at in a stop loss contract and a plan document and the SBCs to make sure that everything's lined up to where there's not going to be, you know, some sort of adversarial 
challenge with a claim down the road. So we have the, those people and those partnerships that, that are the experts, um, which is such a beautiful thing. That means that you know, none, no one, one of us has to be an expert, um, but as a group, we can all be the experts together. Yeah, you got it. You nailed it. Um, a lot of, in our industry, one thing I frequently hear is, oh, the insurance industry, it moves so slow. It takes forever for things to happen. I think that technology is speeding things up. You know, you talked about technology. I think technology has made people move faster, think faster. I think there's still a lot of you know, we've got, we get clients all the time that, you know, in the, the thousand plus area that are still on paper. And I'm like, you know, wow, you think that all these big groups wouldn't be pushing paper anymore, but a lot of them are. So, so there are still some slow moving pieces in the insurance industry. So I know, I know where you want to be. Um, uh, so maybe we can mix it in because I'd love to know your thoughts on where we're going to be in five years. So the realistic you to say, you know, I'd love to be here. You know, are we going to get there or do you think it's going to be a mix of that? But where's the industry going and what do you see five years from now? That's so funny that you asked this because I was just thinking about this last night and then I think I had a dream about it. And then I woke up this morning, I was thinking about it again, but <laughs> I was thinking about how five years ago, you know, it seemed like everyone was saying, yeah, you really have to be over, you know, two, three, 400 employees to, to self fund oh, you really need data to self-fund. If you don't have claims data, you know, it's not possible. You know, my friend or my, my broker expert friend told me that. Uh, we're not there today. Um, we can go all the way down to five lives with no data and, and self-fund. Actually, we can go down to two lives, <laughs> two employees and self-fund a health plan. Um, so the days of those excuses are over. Um, we can self-fund you know, uh, down to a small group size. Um, and the whole, uh, the whole thought process around needing large group data is also, that's, that's five years gone as well. Um, we can underwrite based on a lot of other factors, a lot of other information um, that's all been collectively, you know, warehoused um, that isn't actual individual claim data. So we can underwrite off of a census and get really competitive on a group all the way down to, you know, 25 lives or so. Um, so the status quo days of thinking uh, are over. That's going to keep, that's actually going to accelerate for the next five years. So if you think about where we were five years ago and where we are today and how we've closed all those gaps on you know, what size of group you need to self-fund, that, you know, what kind of data you need to self-fund. I think in the next five years, 10 years, fully insured markets will only be for small group under 50 um, that don't have any way to like community rate experience or um, really there's, there's no way to, uh, for that group to have the cash flow, right? To support self-funding a plan, or they're just still kind of in that Goldilocks phase of, of their uh, employment. You know, they're a boutique startup, you know, 15 to 50, uh, 50 lives and sort of still struggling with their overhead. I think 50 lives and up is just gonna be, you know, completely self-funded. And the, the way of thinking is gonna be in reverse, whereas it used to be, oh, you can't self-fund until you're over 500 lives. The thinking is going to be, oh, you have to self-fund when you're over 50. That's just the way it works. That's just the way this industry has progressed. And that's the normal. Um, that's where we're headed. So we're going to completely flip that on its top. Um, and I think carriers are still going to, they're already um, investing heavily in TPAs, um, narrow network builds, cost containment, I mean, if you take a look at what's going on out there in the market, they're investing heavily in uh, M&A activity with um, PBMs, TPAs, cost containment. I mean, you name it, they're already moving into the self-funded space. So the, all the signs are saying that we're headed in that direction and I'm investing in, uh, heavily into that direction as well. 
Good. Well, change needs to happen. I think folks like you that are leading the charge and, and gathering people and you have the support, I think those are the ones that are really going to going to see these changes. And, and of course, we, we hope everyone, it, it, it's going to take everyone and, and all of us doing their part. So appreciate what you're doing. Where, where are folks going if they want to find, they want to learn more about you, they, whether they're an employer or a broker, and they want to learn more about what you're doing, your initiatives, where, where are we sending them? So we have a website, uh, www.stimulus4business.com. Um, you can also shoot us an email at support at stimulus4business.com. All right, great. And I'll make sure I link that in the show notes. Uh, appreciate you being on, man. It's been a pleasure. Uh, great education. Uh, you did a great job of keeping, keeping it where everyone who tuned in can understand and, uh, and, and always love that you kept it real as well, man. So thanks so much for being on. Dude, it's been great. Thanks for having me. It was uh, nice reconnecting with you as well, man.